Welcome to The Project Project with Sam and Lewis, the podcast that looks at projects throughout pop culture and history. I'm Sam. And I'm Lewis. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about a mystery report that Lewis has done. Mystery to you. (laughs) A mystery to me. Um, You listeners will know already from the title, although you might not know much about it based on Uh, the the title The the, the project title is like extremely vague, so unless you know it As most of them tend to be with these things, don't they really? Yeah. um, Okay, cool. But before that, how are you today, Lewis? Yeah, fine. Uh, obviously, it's been a while since we last recorded because yeah. I was away. We for... had a little break for a week. But yeah. not that you'd know. We are very no. well prepared. It's, the episodes have just kind of caught up with us a little bit. Yeah. We've, we've still got a couple in the bag, so. Yeah. Yeah, we're like, fine. Nice, how about you? Nice. Yeah, not too bad. Um, had a bit of a busy week as well. Um, had my birthday. Yeah. Um, also had a flood in our house, which yeah. was lovely. Um, so being quite busy dealing with that. Everything's fine. No podcasting equipment damage. That's the main thing. <laughs> that's the main thing. That was um, my first concern. Yes. I, <laughs> Fuck your kitchen. I did think you were like, is there anything damaged? I was like, yeah. I know. Well, I was, I was <laughs> mainly thinking your bedroom because that seemed like where yeah, the flood was. was but, um, yeah, it was literally a case of um, 7 a.m. Alarms went off, stepped out into a pool <laughs> of, uh, you know, half of but maybe of water, maybe not quite that much, but yeah, pretty stressful times, but that was about a week ago now and we're all good. So. Yeah, I mean, like I've come around here today and it's not even noticeable, so no, it seems no. to have done recovered. Well. We've done well. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Lewis, have you found any lovely project news? Yeah, I've got I've got a couple. Um, yeah. The I'll say probably the more interesting one for a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one, though, Nokia pauses 5G project due to fear of US penalties. Right, okay. So, Nokia, the... Are they Te- Finnish? Yeah, telecoms giant, yeah. I suppose. Um, yeah, basically, they've um, halted their 5G plans. Right. Because one of the main groups they work with um, are a Chinese company called Oran. Right, um, okay. who are basically blacklisted in America. <laughs> okay, I thought it might be uh, to do with 5G conspiracies there. No. <laughs> no. I don't think that really affects, apart from when people tend to, or seem to be um, blowing up and sabotaging yeah. masks and stuff, but otherwise I suppose <laughs> the the rumours of conspiracies probably don't affect them that much in the, no. in the real time. Um, but yeah, because the, <laughs> they're, they're one of the Chinese firms that's been targeted with US restrictions for posing a threat to US national security wow. for having close ties to the uh, Chinese military. Okay, yeah. But they're one of the companies Nokia work with for their 5G. Um, right. who are apparently quite like, one of the leading companies in it. Yeah, and they've kind yeah. of been like, oh shit, what do we do now? So does it say why they were blacklisted? Is oh, it because, just because it's... they have links with the the Chinese military. Right, okay. I think I just missed so that. So they either like, <laughs> work with them thing. or get some funding from them or okay. something. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a fair enough reason, I suppose. In a yeah. kind of American... It's just uh, frustrating for Nokia. Kind of way, and almost, I think yeah. a lot of European countries have been like, America, like, sort your shit out. Like, let, yeah. let Nokia work with them. Like, what are they going to do? It's also a bit like the Huawei thing where people were... Uh, terrified that their data was going to be which it probably is you know yeah, in the same like, way that apple is, is selling like <laughs> i don't think it matters if it's huawei you know. or apple or samsung yeah, all our yeah. data is being stolen or mark zuckerberg <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah it's just like it seems to be a, it's it seems a shame that like um like global politics is kind of getting in the way of technological yeah in, no. in, 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 gonna, in innovation, innovation. <laughs> I was going to say intuition I was going to say invention, but invention. Like, that doesn't quite work but it's going to become more and more like that isn't it really and yeah. things will become like national inventions yeah. and there'll be patents I could on see part of it, it as well it could be the US trying to twist Nokia into using an American company yeah it's probably likely to, like, to be boost their that. economy yeah, instead yeah. But, but if if the if the Chinese company is the leading one or the one that makes most sense, then let them yeah. go with it. I would I would say, obviously not knowing, you know, they might actually have 
you know spyware links or you know some sort of thing yeah like that and like that we don't know about as big as kind of the US market is the Chinese market is just as big so Nokia may yeah. get by fine by just producing to Europe and China <laughs> and kind of just ignoring America yeah 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 you'd think so yeah well I guess we'll just have to find out with that yeah, one won't we we'll, see how it we'll progresses see. Um, and the other one I've got is Project Magnum Okay. Is an Outrider style loot shooter with cool grapple. So it's a new PlayStation oh, okay. uh, third person shooter. Nice. nice. Uh, from Korea. Uh, a mixture of sci fi and fantasy. Um, okay. Apparently, they've gone like really. It's made for like PS5, but they've gone like really like overboard with like realistic graphics right, and stuff. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's been compared to Destiny. Okay. Um, they put out like a short trailer, and it's, it's got some cool things, like some like a grapple hook that it's kind of almost like a Spider Man kind right, of okay, engine, yeah, but so looking. Can... Really, and apparently, there's a cool thing where you can like punch people, and like if you get like knocked away, you can like grapple them and pull oh, them back. And pull them back and stuff. You should nice, kind of do nice. in the Spider Man yeah, game. Yeah, I feel like it's it sounds like kind of bits and pieces from other things but maybe with i mean there's there's a korean i think it's a rpg like an mmo like a world of warcraft something that was out a couple of years ago that had like insane graphics and like the character creation was like you know super in depth you could make like anybody kind of thing and i don't know if it ever came over here but does right. it does it look like this is going to be released I mean, if it's there's, being reported on in the West, it's, it's yeah. There's no. This is from NME, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's got no release date. They've just kind of released a teaser trailer. Interesting. Um, but the quote is they've put in there is that it's uh, combines RPG play with third person shooter combat. Right. It presents beautiful visuals and attractive and unique characters based in a sci fi oh, style attractive player. Attractive characters, eh? <laughs> versus environment worldview. It provides exciting battles using various skills, actions, and guns, as well as the fun of high quality PvE shooter battles that target huge bosses. Wow. So, oh, like, yeah. this, this may be, I mean,. I've got a picture up here. The uh, screenshot I can see does look like it's got pretty realistic. Is it like the there. yellowy one? No, it's a picture of a guy shooting a gun. It looks a bit like a Gears of War mixed with like an anime kind of style. Yeah, almost. like the picture that I've got looks like really realistic. <laughs> but I mean, cool. all the stuff that comes out on PS5 over the next year or two is going to look really good until we're all just used to it. Yeah, I feel. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I um, have yet to play a. Um, next gen console i don't know if you've have you seen no. one no i'm quite looking forward to it but i feel like because of the fact that the they were really hard to get hold of yeah i think at the time i think i probably i whether i should have or not i had enough money at that point to yeah. probably splurge on one now i definitely don't at the moment i did have someone the other day show me their ps5 and like i know people said it but like it is huge. Like, yeah, it was yeah. like a I bit... saw one in a shop recently. You know, they have them in the glass kind of yeah. uh, container things. Yeah. It looks like a like a full like computer. Yeah. And yeah. It's just like fans all Almost the way like the, the desktop I've got down. Not I mean, quite that, as big as that. That <laughs> is something else. I mean that's the biggest computer I've ever seen. But Yeah. But um yeah, cool. But that's yeah, something that's something to look forward to then. It could can... be a fun little game. There was um I won't uh spoil it on here because it's probably a future episode but there was a a project game um you might be able to guess if you're a, in the game media loops or whatever so i won't <laughs> but, um, it looks pretty good and i've actually got a copy of it because it was oh, yeah. pre alfred or whatever in like 2013 so i've got a copy of it and it's split screen on the PC. Right. So we could give that a go at some point. I don't know exactly the format we'd we'd use for that, but we, you know, it's definitely something that I think we could look at. Yeah, it'd be nice to do a video game at some point. Yeah, we found a couple when we did our first bits of research. So yeah, yeah. it's just can... it's just the format really. I'm sure we could do something similar to this, but I think maybe getting the gameplay involved might be fun. I don't yeah. know. Maybe a video thing. It's it's kind of new territory for us, so we'll wait till we're a bit more. A bit more solidified and yeah, what we're doing. So, yeah, <laughs> cool. But yeah, we can come back to that Project Magnum, Um, you know, maybe when more, more news comes out. Yeah, hopefully it gets released at some point. Yeah. And we if can... it is just next gen, you know, we might not be able to actually do anything on it. But if it's in yeah. years time, who knows? We yeah, might, exactly. One of us might have the, 
Yeah. Like, it's thing, like, uh, awesome. was it last week or week before we talked about the film, the Henry Cavill film yeah, coming out? Yeah, project. It was like a, not a rom com, but it was kind of kind like, of a rom com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, <laughs> now I've got two things to look out for for, for future yeah, that's good. release. It's just what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got a film and a game coming out. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Cool. Any more news? There? No, Are no, that, that's to, it for this week. To move on. So we'll move on to the main topic, Lewis. You want to take the reins? Yeah, so it's it's a report and um, I've got a question to ask you to, okay. to get us into it. <sighs> get myself kind of set the up. scene. <laughs> um, so following the Soviet Union's successful launch of Sputnik... Right, okay. the first ever artificial satellite. Yeah, your little warm up there, quite off yeah. footing, but <laughs> okay, uh, <I'll> stop. <laughs> following Sputnik, which of the following was a legitimate plan by the U.S. Air Force? Right, okay. It is Air Force at the time because NASA okay, didn't come yeah. out until like a year or two after. Uh, so was it A. Shoot down Sputnik? <laughs> was it B. Launch their own satellite and claim it made space first. Okay, that sounds very plausible. <laughs> or was it C, detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon? <laughs> um, I mean, I'd like to think it'd be the third one, just because that sounds like an absolutely mad story. Um, but I'm not sure why they would want to do that. Um, and I think either of the first two are kind of plausible. Um, <laughs> It's mad that they are plausible. Like, yeah, it sounds yeah. ridiculous, but like, I mean, we've not done many of these reports yet. But from what we've talked about and what <laughs> what we've done research on, I think anything is kind anything of possible. Is possible. Now so point. yeah, shoot down Sputnik, um, launch the road, and say it got there first, or nuke the moon. I feel like I've heard something about both of those first two vaguely. Right. I'm gonna play it safe and go with um, the second one. Launch their own satellite and yeah, claim made space first. That... Okay, so Project A119. Right. Which won't give you any clues. No. Also known as a study of lunar research flights, oh, no. was a plan developed in 1958 by the US Air Force <laughs> to detonate a nuclear bomb Fuck on the moon. Hell. Fuck it out. <laughs> I like that you were like, oh, it could like, be one of the first two. Like, I wish it was that one. But... <laughs> Trying not to give away, like, yeah, they tried to, they were going to nuke the moon. <laughs> Okay. Um, nice. So it was meant as a show of force, resulting yeah. in a boost of morale for the American people <laughs> and to show the capabilities of the US military for, following the launch of Sputnik. <laughs> Sorry, so, it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. Thing. Any thoughts at the moment? Like, um, First of all, yeah, okay. Show of force is, you know, we've touched on that before with the battleship maneuvering thing in the yeah. Project Blue Book, a couple of things like that. But surely it seems dangerous to... <laughs> to blow up the moon I, it, i'm sure well, they're not trying I'm, to blow up yeah the moon, but it's a danger of <laughs> that's what i was saying like i was looking through some like potential projects i came across this american <laughs> nuke in the moon i was like i can't not that's do it just so like typical isn't it it was almost yeah. too like <laughs> it just seemed like the one that you would have made up <laughs> yeah I, a lot of the stuff that i read were like it's like the um a super villain in like a comic book yeah plan. it really is like, yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna nuke the moon i'm pretty sure yeah i'm pretty sure i've seen or read something where somebody does that exactly maybe it was based off this it may well have been <laughs> yeah. um so the only real background to why is sputnik right okay. so sputnik was launched on the 4th of october 1957 okay and gave the soviet union an early lead in the space race it was kind of the first yeah accomplishment in the space race that's right an artificial satellite it's only tiny like it's only like the size of like a volleyball yeah it's pretty tiny it like, looks sticks a bit, coming out of it yeah yeah it's very basic looking kind of like almost like a comet isn't it or like yeah. in terms of with the antenna kind of like a trail behind yeah it kind of thing yeah but it's and then like a couple months later they sent one up with a dog in it yes which was the first like a like a yes. yeah the first animal in space first animal in space and then died I think on the way back in monkeys later chimpanzees <laughs> yeah. um yeah. but anyway the success of sputnik and the failures of the americans to replicate the launch in their own project vanguard led right. to what the media described as the Sputnik crisis. Right, okay. So the Americans had Project Vanguard tried putting their own satellite in yeah, space yeah, and yeah. they kept failing. And it made this whole crisis of like, oh shit, are the Soviets like more advanced than yeah, us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are their missiles better than us? <laughs> um, Very um, <laughs> insecure. <laughs> yeah, it's classic Cold War stuff. <laughs> but like, 
Follow, so it was launched on the 4th of October, 1957. Right. By the end of October that month, the New York Times had mentioned Sputnik in 279 articles. Wow. 11, 11 a day. <laughs> so like, that's, that's just completely insane. So like they're literally losing their shit. Like, in what? In just the New York Times? Just, just the New York Times, that is. So like, that's not even talking about all American media. So it's like media. in the gossip column and it's like, oh, just like Sputnik. <laughs> so it's like, it seems like all anyone could talk about yeah. that month was Sputnik. The rumour is Sputnik might be dating an asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> like there might be a film about Sputnik. It's Sputnik's <laughs> illegitimate child revealed. <laughs> Someone's written a book about Sputnik. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it made the Americans like so what really. What was that in like two months? Then did you say in one month? In one month, two hundred and seventy nine <laughs> articles mentioned it. Um, so the main group we're looking at is the Armour Research Foundation, uh, abbreviated to ARF or ARF, because the Americans love their initialisms. Yeah, they, they certainly do. Um, at the Illinois Institute of Technology, and they began studying the effects of nuclear explosions on the environment in 1949. Right. Obviously, this is four years after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, yep. and they didn't really know what the long term yeah. lo- long term results were. Um, and then, like nine years later, they began covertly researching the effect of nuclear explosion on the moon. Right. Um, following so, so they started to look. So they they were looking at kind of the results of nuclear like explosions. Nuclear fallout, yeah. Like so the US Air Force approached them and said, "Can you research a nuclear weapon on the moon for us?" And they were right, like, "Okay, sure." So um, is this them kind of looking ahead and thinking about being on the moon and whether we'll need to use one? At that not point? really. So. um this all came quite quickly after Sputnik. So Sputnik happened yeah, and they're like, yeah. what can we do? It seems like a bit of a leap almost. Yeah. Doesn't it? Um, yeah. But the idea was that they wanted to create an explosion that would be visible from Earth. Right. Yeah, you said the so, show of force. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Bruce the Moreau, American people. The idea is if you set it on kind of the the line of like the shadowed yes, side, yeah. if you land it on there, then the dust particles will be lit up by the sun. Right. And you'd be able to see so it from Earth. Like really, yeah, so it'd yeah. be like, look at our capabilities. <laughs> you, you can put a rock in the in the in the sky. Look what we can do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Rumours had spread in the American media that the Soviets had planned to detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon. Right. During a nu- uh, during a lunar eclipse to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the October Revolution. I see. Okay. Which would have been like uh, a month after Sputnik was launched. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's 9th of November because calendar's yeah, different. Yeah, October whole... Revolution happened in November. That's right. We'll move yeah. past that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, our, that's another story for yeah. another time, isn't it? Um, so a 10-member team was assembled. Um, three main guys I'm going to talk about. I'll do a quick bio of at the end. Yep. Led by uh, Leonard Rafel, mm-hmm. uh, a physicist from the University of Chicago. Okay. Uh, he got on board a planetary physics specialist called Gerard Kuiper. Okay. Uh, and Jared Kuiper brought along his doctoral student, Carl Sagan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so not exactly unknowns there. Uh, well, no. not anymore. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. Like, those three names. And when's this? This is in 59, Fi- is it? Yeah, uh, 50, 59? <laughs> it's just after Sputnik. Uh, 58. Yeah, 58. But yeah, right, so okay. Carl Sagan's a doctoral student at the point. Right, it's before right. he's yeah, Carl yeah. Sagan, like, famous. <laughs> very young very famous Carl Sagan, life. yeah. Yeah, when I saw his name, I was like, what? And like, it's, okay. It's we kind go. of his thought that we even know about this, but I'll get right. into that at the it's end. Okay, okay. Uh, his job was to, um, he kind of did the maths. Yes. To figure out um, how the explosion of the dust would be visible from Earth, yeah. how they could make yeah. it so, because obviously it wouldn't have a mushroom effect yes, or a shockwave I because because of the atmosphere atmosphere, atmosphere and stuff yeah, i watched yeah. the videos on like what a nuke on the moon would be like and they're like because there'd be no shockwave it would just like keep getting bigger and bigger like the heat and the explosion right okay. they're like if there's any like satellites going around the moon like they'd just be vaporized <laughs> like <laughs> so they'd have to account for that yeah or unless it was sputnik <laughs> <laughs> yeah they'd be like, oh, fuck you sputnik <laughs> but obviously at the time there was nothing near the yeah, moon yeah yeah so it would just be natural um, yeah. satellites. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's they were three of the main people. The ten man team. It's not huge. Um, they initially planned to use a hydrogen bomb. 
Right. But this was vetoed by the US Air Force as they said it would be too heavy. It's going to be right, hard to okay, get it to yeah. the moon. Okay. Uh, so they decided on a W-25 warhead, which is a pretty small but still nuclear bomb. Yeah. It's one, it had a 1.7 kiloton yield. Okay. Which is a tenth of the size of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Right. So relatively small. Relatively small, yeah, but yeah. still a nuke. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> but I think it's kind of thing like, it would still create that kind of dust cloud. Yeah. So it'd be visible for Would Earth. it be, or I don't know if you're going to get to this, is it something that would cause damage to the surface of the moon? Potentially. Right. I will yeah, mention yeah, a yeah. bit, but it's one of the concerns. Yeah. Uh, the W-25 would be carried by a rocket to the shadowed side, as I said, kind of on that line, detonate on impact, and then the dust cloud would be lit up by the sun, okay. is yeah. the plan. So would it so some almost like a kind of fireworky display type? Thing, well, they reckon kind of... it would be like kind of a a shining kind of star in the sky, kind right, of what we'd okay. see. Like you look at yeah. the moon, there'd be a, a light coming. And off is it, it on the edge so that more people can see it? Is yeah, well, the they figured that. Um, I think it was if you do it just about on the dark side. Yeah. Then the dust would oh, be lit the up light with is a still backdrop. From, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it. Behind it would just be black because yeah. it'd be shadowed, but the dust would be lit up. Yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah. if it's right on the on full the edge, dark side, it doesn't catch any light. If it's on the full light side, then it would the, just be... You wouldn't be able to see it because yeah. Yeah, the yeah, moon yeah. It would, just would be, be the, bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Makes so you sense. want it so it's... So it it's quite the, a, quite a um, balancing act almost. Yeah, yeah. The middle, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They reckon they could get it within two miles of the location, so... They could pretty much guarantee it would be... They're quite confident in that. Yeah. Um, Leonard, their calculations for yeah. Mr. Sagan. <laughs> Mr. Sagan. Leonard Rayfield, the, the leader, said that a launch would be feasible by 1959. Okay. So they worked on it and they were like... So when did this start again? 58. So it started in 58 and that was the same year as Sputnik, was it? Yeah. So almost immediately yeah, after yeah. Sputnik, they were they like... They started it and they're like, by the next year, we'll be able to... Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the year after Sputnik. So either, 57, sorry. 58, they start it and then by 59... They're yeah, like, we're we're gonna be able to do it. Yeah, so like pretty fast. Like, Ooh, here's an idea. But right, something a year so later, we reckon we... the space race is like st- just started. That's pretty yeah. confident, isn't it? <laughs> or maybe overconfident. <laughs> but I guess if it's just like shooting a rocket, because they can do that. It's you're not the ma- concerned the man about stuff. Is yeah, the issue, isn't it? Not yeah. concerned about getting people back. So I suppose they're they're aware of the kind of weight limitations and stuff. Because you said that the yeah was it the air force said about the hydrogen bomb? hydrogen bomb. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they because they yeah because NASA wasn't quite formed yet. The air force took control of all space stuff because yeah. it's in the air. Because they're the closest. Literally, yeah, and, you know. Um, I think it's literally like <laughs> fifty eight or fifty nine that NASA was formed. Right. Okay. But this yeah. whole project fell under the the air force. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as well as a show of strength, there were some scientists scientific discoveries that could be made yeah so a lot of people have been like oh why would these scientists get on board with this if they're like true scientists why yeah, are they you, you could jump in a propaganda yeah. thing but there was some science Carl sagan thought that it'd be a great way to try and identify the presence of microbes or organic molecules on the moon right okay and not just like his thing's always been like extraterrestrial life yeah, yeah. So he, yeah. he kind of said if we do that, we might be able, from like the dust that comes up, we might be able to identify right, some right. organic molecules. Okay. Leonard Rayfield considered if the blast would produce enough seismic activity to evaluate the makeup of the moon's subsurface structure. Right. So like so it's like biological, geological. Yeah. So like yeah, like yeah. we've got plates, like do the moon yeah, have the same yeah. sort of thing? We'd find out because you can kind of see You'd the see effect the, on it. Yeah, yeah. So there was some like science yeah, discoveries that could be after, made um you know that well effectively the manhattan project which we haven't covered quite yet but we'll do in future you know there's concerns with that especially as it got later on that you know uh, some of the scientists were obviously concerned about the uses yeah especially leading up to to the eventual well, yeah one thing yeah. this kind of we'll probably talk about on the manhattan project yeah, about yeah. robert oppenheimer that's exactly, was like yeah. blacklisted america for talking yeah. out against it well that's it yeah and you can imagine because this is not long after really yeah um that yeah there would be similar concerns but i suppose um because they're not developing the weaponry almost yeah the weaponry's there they're not boosting that there's although technically i suppose doing some sort of space orbital strike could be a you know yeah. something that could but be... I think they they made the point but, as well like yeah. in the late 50s America 
turning down this sort of thing could be seen as un-American. Well, that's the other thing. There's like with very... McCarthyism. Yeah, It'd yeah. be like, oh, are you a bed. communist? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, like, so I can see that. So he's almost pressured into doing it and then maybe even finding a scientific reason yeah. to back themselves, like to make themselves feel more better. Pretty much. More better, better about it. Um, yeah. So the project was eventually cancelled in January 1959. Right. They'd done all kind of the maths hadn't built anything um but it was kind of all there they were like we're ready to yeah. go as soon as you give us the okay <laughs> um but it was like the risks yeah um they they even kind of made the point that if they because they were kind of aiming for the edge of the moon if you will on yeah. that line is that if they miss the moon completely yeah. <laughs> there's a very good chance it'd swing around and come back and land on earth so like there's a chance we might nuke ourselves here yeah. and the thing is it probably wouldn't be them directly would it because it the could earth be would anyone. have rotated it you know i'm sure yeah. they could figure it out i mean if but... it landed on like moscow they'd be like oh, okay <laughs> <They're> like, oh. <laughs> but it could also happen on i mean also that's not although that's what they want to nuke moscow it's also not what they want yeah. because of the, the imagine, imagine that though. being like sorry 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 we didn't mean to nuke you we're trying to nuke the moon <laughs> don't like, start a what? nuclear war the whole thing just to go back to what you said at the start with um you know, leaks and rumours from Moscow that they were planning the same thing. Yeah. Was that substantiate, substantiated, do you think? Um, I'll, I'll mention that. Because it? Okay. Yeah. it just reminded me of what we talked about with the psychic research. And it's like, it sometimes just seemed to be an excuse. But anyway, yeah. we'll get to it. We'll, get well to yeah, it. I've, I've got okay. that coming. Because <laughs> that, that wasn't yeah. really we, discovered till later on. Um, Leonard Rayfield's main concern as well, because yeah. he even though he was leading it, he obviously raised the concerns about what could go wrong. Right. And he was concerned about the nuclear fallout may affect other lunar research projects and potential right. colonization. Yeah, yeah. He's like, if we nuke the moon, we might never be able to go there. Yeah, absolutely. Because they don't know, I suppose. Because if they're just learning about nuclear fallout and how that affects the Earth, yeah. if they haven't actually seen, it might hang around longer without yeah. the atmosphere yeah i think i we now know that like if it had happened then that area of the moon it'd be like a year of right. high radiation okay. and then after that it'd go back to like normal levels of radiation Is that right okay so, so not the, too bad because there's yeah. a lack of atmosphere and yeah stuff. so it doesn't hold on to but it at almost. the time it was yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. what if we want to go to the moon no totally yeah i mean that was the first kind of well i was also thinking of um you know bits of the moon flying off but i think i'm thinking yeah. of a bigger explosion than it <laughs> i was. think uh i saw one, one concern a couple of people had was like oh what if it knocks the moon out of orbit yeah. <laughs> to knock the moon out of orbit it have to be something like a thousand times stronger yeah. than the most powerful nuke right. ever created okay. yeah, yeah. and considering this is like a, that, that's like <laughs> ten thousand times more powerful than the one they're using yeah yeah so it's that a, was never really a concern no, but it's people here like exactly as i did people here nuclear bomb and they think oh my god like it's the yeah. you know because you know realistically it's one of the most deadly weapons that we've got yeah. but the moon is like a mini planet effectively yeah, <laughs> yeah do you know what i mean it's like um, it's like blowing up the whole of earth completely yeah It'd take quite a lot of <laughs> weaponry i'd imagine yeah exactly yeah, like yeah. we've seen nukes land on this planet and it didn't get moved <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah no, um <laughs> but yeah it was also like they kind of one of the main reasons they were like maybe nuking the moon wouldn't go down with the well with the american public <laughs> yeah yeah like they were like, maybe if we like put a man on the moon, that might be more popular. Yes, I can totally see that. Which it's a bit, it, I mean, I know that Americans, you know, not to be generalizing too much, but the, like military shows a force and there's a, yeah. there's a big military culture kind of ingrained there. But uh, it's almost like attacking like a rock. That, yeah. And people like the moon. That's the thing. There's also talks about like, like the man in the moon, kind of the moon's yeah. kind of like, like a like a friendly a friendly nice thing yeah. and it's like why why are we tagging the moon like, what did the moon do to us yeah it's almost like un-american almost <laughs> to like punch the moon kind of yeah thing. yeah and no, i can totally see it. But they probably should have done something like um painted a big stars and stripes on the moon or something like that yeah you know? what? like some sort of they could have released dies onto the moon or something what <laughs> film is it where they put like a heart on the on the moon um hancock i watched hancock yeah, a few months it? ago yeah. <laughs> and uh his friend's like company 
uh, have like a heart logo. Yes. And yeah. he ends up at the end of the film putting it on the moon. That it's like familiar, best yeah. advertising yeah. ever. Yeah. Although I imagine people be like, fuck that company. Imagine if like, yeah, like an, Apple, like yeah, a big if Apple. Just an Apple on the moon, you'd be like, oh, fuck you, Apple. Like, yeah, because you would, I would feel like how we were saying people might feel about this. You'd be like, fuck's sake, like that's the moon. Leave that's it the alone. moon. Yeah. Oh, what did the moon ever do to us? But yeah, the moon is kind of seen as like this kind of. Almost like a neutral thing as well. Yeah. Although like, people are obviously trying to lay claim to it. And stuff yeah. Like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was one of the main reasons they cancelled it. And then right. the 1963 Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty okay. and the 1967 Outer Space Treaty <laughs> uh, banned any future plans to detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon. Those treaties kind of made space neutral no yes. matter what. Yeah, yeah. Kind of peak Cold War, they were like... No, I bet like some people said, like, had the Americans gone through with this, it would have made like the space race a military endeavor rather than yes, a science yeah. one. Which I think is a fear that people yeah. had, didn't they? Because it's like, who, especially who, with the kind of rocket missile technology, you yeah. know, was it paperclip and stuff, which is like, you know, ex Nazi scientists working. And yeah. NASA, like, yeah, it's, there's a lot of scary stuff. Like most of the there. space race was like, who can achieve more science yeah. quicker? And it's it's very Cold War, isn't it? Which yeah, you know, like the saying, response to this might have been like blowing up the moon. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, you keep going, and it's like, yeah, and then we've got bits of moon raining. I mean, the thing is, if the moon <laughs> blew up, we'd be like absolutely fucked. Yeah, because it's like, like the, not even just the debris. It's, it's like the tides and tides, stuff. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. Werewolves, <laughs> <laughs> which is mad considering how far away the moon it's actually is. It's absolutely insane. It's it's like, just like a rock moves slightly closer and it affects so like much Like, you can fit, like, all the planets in our solar system between us and the moon. Yeah, yeah. Like, if they were side by side. Like, it's yeah. so far away, it's weird that it has that much of an impact that, on I mean, us. even that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Because you think about the size of, like, Saturn and Jupiter. Yeah, but stick them side by yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I keep thinking of, um, I was trying to remember what film it was. I think it's, did you see Guy Pearce in The Time Machine? No. So you know The Time Machine, the um, yeah. H.G. <laughs> Wells novel, I think it might be. Um, somewhere I might like have that. fucked that up. But yeah, um, there was an adaptation, 2000s at some point, and he, as he does, goes through time. And at one point stops in a time where there's, you know, they're quite prosperous, you know, there's lots of technology and stuff. Um, and they're mining the moon and then he goes forward a bit further and like the moon is all like cracked and stuff and it's like a, an apocalyptic situation. <laughs> They've mined it too much that it started crumbling and then I think he goes forward a bit more and then there's just like bits raining down and I think that's what causes Shit. in this version the kind of post-apocalyptic future that right. he ends up in with like the uh, weird mutant <laughs> just reminds me of that. Do you remember that there? episode of Doctor Who where the moon was I an know, egg? I know, I was that was <laughs> Literally not... one of the worst it's episodes. It's so stupid for anyone who hasn't seen it. I think it's mostly set on the moon, is it? And then they figure out at the end, because there's, oh, there's like, um, I think there's, there's spiders and stuff on the moon. Is it the same yes. one? Yes. And it turns out they were like protecting the egg the egg and it's a drag a space dragon's egg yeah and then there's a shot which is kind of cool i guess where the it moon cracks, cracks open. open this dragon comes out and then off screen this is the worst bit off screen they're like oh it's laid another egg and then it just goes back and then the moon is just back, yeah and then and they're they, like and it's fine it's and everyone <laughs> forgets it's happened it's like holy fuck you realize like the the moon is an egg and we're, we're just never so going to talk about this again. the moon is another again. egg and also it just defeats the whole point of it. <laughs> also, how could a thing come out of an egg and then lay an egg that's the exact same size? Right? That's just not the way things work. <laughs> it's uh, it's a good job we didn't nuke it because yeah, then the dragon might attack us. The dragon would be attacking us. Jesus. A moon-sized dragon. Like The moon's like the size of like Australia, I think. Yeah, like surface. I think so, yeah. Like, yeah, that sounds imagine like, like right, a dragon yeah. the size of Australia <laughs> just yeah raining down fire <laughs> rain and fire <laughs> oh that is that, that is, is a good a, film a good it's film. a shame it's not, there's some films that I'm like oh I wish I could talk about that on the pod I but... know I was just thinking that it's a shame I think <laughs> like if Project we, Rain of Fire if we really started running out of ideas we could look back at what they were called when they were under development Project Fire Dragon or whatever yeah. you know, and do an episode but I feel like because we've got so many topics to cover <laughs> Yeah, we'll never get it'd be a bit it. cheap to start going that way. Yeah, and um, we're anything but cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so the existence of Project A119 was a complete secret until the mid-90s. Wow, okay. It's like 35 years later. Uh, when 
K. Davidson began research into Carl Sagan for the purpose of a biography. Nice, okay. Carl Sagan, when he was applying for, I think it was a job at a university, had to submit some right. uh, doctoral papers um, to kind of show off his science. Yeah, and yeah. two of the papers he submitted were possible contribution of nu- lunar nuclear weapons <laughs> detonations to the solution of some problems in planetary astronomy and... <laughs> Radiological contaminations of the moon by nuclear weapons detonations. So this uh, biographer was like, "Wait a minute, what the fuck? So like, why? What is this? Like the same reaction that I had at the start." Yeah. So like, basically, Carl Sagan is obviously sworn to secrecy and is kind of not quite followed that. Yeah, handed yeah. in these papers, <laughs> and they. So it's really discoverable, and it's like, yeah. holy shit, Cole Sagan was working on nuking the moon. <laughs> so it wasn't fully like a classified thing then, surely. <laughs> oh, or, no, it, or the actual documents that they were working on were yeah. that he'd written up his own findings. Yeah. So and then what was that? A number of years later that he'd submitted that. Yeah. So I I like follow in the years following, he'd submitted that in like yeah, the early sixties. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. They kind of like cool, and it was only in like thirty. And nobody in the universities was like they probably like wow, this is ground breaking research yeah. and then 30 years later someone researching <laughs> Cole Sagan because he was now famous yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was like what the fuck and then uh, Sagan died like during yeah. this so I was going to say it was around that he time, died in 96 it? right okay um, and then the biography was released and K. Davidson had been like oh yeah he kind of did these papers <laughs> and a load of people were like wait what we were going to nuke the moon that's really mad to be honest um, Leonard Ryfield was alive at this point right. so then he was questioned about it and he was like yeah yeah basically he was like Sagan, Sagan um, probably shouldn't have put out those papers but um, it's but yeah, out there now we were, now kind of thing. We were yeah, doing yeah. it and then as a result <laughs> of that a study of lunar research flights, Volume One, detailing Project A One Nineteen, was made public. <laughs> nice, nice. What was that? That was that kind of declassified then. After yeah, that point. in the year two thousand. So was it quite a? Was it in the press and stuff, or was it more um, just it's like hard to tell? But research, I think yeah. I think it was because um, after Sagan's biography came out, yeah, yeah, it was like a public request. To right. okay. declassify this paper. So whether it was big in the press or not, there were it was a public knowledge yeah, thing. And, at that um, point. Yeah, and yeah. that was the only one left surviving. They destroyed all the others. Right. And okay. that was the only one they hadn't destroyed. Okay. So they kind of like, yeah, okay, we released it. And because of that, <laughs> we know about Project A119. Right, cool. And what was the name of the other scientist there? Uh Leonard Leonard Rayfield. Leonard's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and he was kind of like, well, it's out there now. <laughs> yeah, we were doing that. <laughs> oh, cool. But like he it was such kind of a minor part of his career that he kind of didn't really care. Right, yeah, because it was only like what a year and a half, two yeah. years of actual work there. Yeah. Um but yeah, if Carl Sagan hadn't basically broken the law in submitting those yeah, papers, yeah, true, true. Then we would never have known about this. That's absolutely true. And if he hadn't gone on to become the, the yeah, successful physicist you know media personality if he wasn't he was. famous then we would never yeah know. yeah so it's a bit it's a very kind of slim line of um chance yeah there, which makes yeah, you think and... like what else have they planned absolutely it's like we were saying earlier there's so much stuff especially i imagine stuff like that 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 um that didn't come into fruition that was yeah, just maybe like they talked plans. about for like a year yeah yeah maybe absolutely. they did plan on shooting down sputnik but we'll, well never know it's funny you should mention that and i don't want to go into it too much but are you Since planning on shooting down Sputnik? <laughs> I'm planning on shooting down Sputnik. No, um, the reason why I thought that was familiar is because I'm pretty sure there is something on our list of projects that is in that realm there. Right. So okay. we may well do, I don't think it's enough for a full episode, but we can see maybe. Yeah, we can um, maybe do a mini, mini report or something. Yeah, maybe do a cup, maybe do a mini report each in an episode or something. Yeah. But, but yeah. Um, so in 2010, yeah. so fairly recently now, it was discovered that the Soviet Union did have a similar <laughs> plan called Project E4. Like the TV channel in the UK. Yeah. Um, but the earliest records of this project was in 1958, after the rumours in the American media about right. the plan. 
So I don't know if it was kind of like, oh, huh, maybe we should try that. Yeah. So it's a bit of a like, he said, she said. Yeah. And you pick up. Yeah. But it seems like a of that Project A119 or... started first. What maybe is it some... with these names, honestly? These are like A119, uh, well, E4. Like... E4, they had a series of projects. Project ah. E1 was to reach the moon. Okay. E2 and 3 were sending a probe to the far side of the moon and take pictures. And E4... <laughs> E4 is blow up the moon. <laughs> nuke the moon. <laughs> um, and obviously they cancelled E4 because we would know about it. Uh, they pretty much said the same reasons as why Project A119 yeah. was cancelled. Like, okay. <laughs> the risks outweigh the benefits here. And at this point, they're, they're in the lead of the space race. They don't need to yeah, nuke yeah. the moon. <laughs> no, that's, that's fair enough, really. Um... So, yeah, that's kind of the main story. I've got a, a short bit on on each of those scientists we looked yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, please. But before, like, any general thoughts on, I mean, it's, on the story itself? It's completely insane, but also I'm not that surprised. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure how far along they would get, to be honest. And it sounds like they did a lot of the theoretical, a lot of the planning. Yeah. And... But maybe not. Yeah, I mean, they didn't well as far as we know didn't actually um do anything there um but yeah it's just it's, it's just it's also it's it's like it's a mixture of um being very unrealistic and like unbelievable but also like really typical of yeah just like cold war tactics and it's like like we were yeah. saying with the space race it's all very much show of force but in a non-military way like yeah. it's not surprising that it would have tipped over into they were the, they were willing the to do it in a military way things. yeah absolutely um but yeah it's one of those like obviously it never actually happened but just the the idea yeah that they're planning on nuking the moon just sounds so preposterous it sounds so it does sound like a doctor who episode yeah honestly like they go back to the cold war and yeah this exact thing i mean yeah. I'm not, to be fair it's probably something they'll do at some point yeah because some doctor who or some sort of time travel yeah, writer. I could see Star, Star Trek could do Star it. Star Trek, yeah, like, yeah. It's just one of those like crazy sci-fi things. Yeah, yeah, and also with Carl Sagan as well, it makes you think how what other projects was he potentially yeah. involved in? I mean, because... he was only a doctoral student on yeah, this, yeah. so he was quite young. Yeah, yeah, because but... you think with people, um, with people with some sort of you know like Stephen Hawking or someone like that, not necessarily because they've got um, like a press. Uh, image or whatever because they're well known but if you're like the highest person in your field there's almost a complete 100% chance that you've been consulted on something that's like yeah. classified or do you know what I mean like Stephen Hawking's probably been um, consulted on some sort of dark matter yeah. bomb or like you know yeah, portal exactly. do you know what I mean, I mean it's even kind of, theoretically it's kind of what we looked at you know? with Blue Book and like the, the guys involved with that were yeah. picked to look at these UFOs because they were yeah, yeah, the top top, top, top scientists. Guys. Yeah, yeah. So it's, and um, so yeah, these three guys did actually have quite a career. Yeah, uh, Leonard uh, Rifel. It's spelled R E I F F E L. Uh, it's either Rifel or Rifel. R E I. Yeah, some yeah. some places I listen to listen pronounced it Rifel. I, I some Rifel. Yeah, I think Rifel, Rifel, Rifel. Feel is it F E Double F E L. Double F E L. Rifel. Yeah. Rifel. Yeah. yeah. Um, Correct us he, if we're wrong. <laughs> yeah. He went on to play a big part in NASA because kind of this kind of stuff he was already involved. So yeah, when NASA came along. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was originally a consultant on the Apollo project. Okay. Uh, eventually becoming deputy director of the project. So wow. pretty much one of the top dons so in really, NASA. Which makes sense if he's already been working with, you know, the predecessor. Yeah. Um, he also did radio and television shows. He won an Emmy right. and a Peabody Award for his like wow. science shows. So really kind of prolific then. Yeah, yeah, he was a consultant to the governments of Belarus and Ukraine after Chernobyl. Right. Because of his <laughs> nuclear work. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And he wrote a science fiction novel, novel called The Contaminant in the mid-80s. Right, okay, cool. Um, Is and that then, about nuclear stuff as well? Do yeah, you know? it's, it's like a nuclear fallout sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, so yeah. like, he's kind of done everything. Like, Was his specialism both... So both nuclear stuff and, and space, space stuff, stuff really. yeah, okay. which is why he led this program. Yeah, makes um, sense. He died yeah. 2017, so only four years ago. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but obviously he was the one that basically said, yeah, this happened yeah. <laughs> in like 2000. Say it. So he was, yeah, so he would have been. But I think he, he the fact that he's got an Emmy and a Peabody, he would have been quite. 
popular and well known yeah, in America yeah, anyway. Yeah. So he's the best. He would have been a good person to to talk about it anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think that's why they. He kind of felt. I mean, if he was kind of an unknown, he probably could have kept quiet and not said anything. Yeah, but... yeah. They were like, "Oh, you're on this list. You're somebody yeah. who talks to the news cameras all the time." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he just seems to have done like loads, like TV, radio. Yeah, that's that's right. That's books, an ins- head of NASA. Considering the other person on the list, one of the other people is Carl Sagan. Yeah, you know, that's it's almost surprising. Like, but... Carl Sagan isn't the only famous person. Yeah, <laughs> that's very strange. The also, other... I haven't heard of this guy. I mean, maybe yeah, uh, you know, some of the listeners might have heard of. Um, yeah, it might be. Him, but if you, um, I think the the TV and radio stuff was like seventies, eighties. So if you're yeah. an American that lived in that time, you probably yeah, yeah, potentially. aware of who it was. Yeah. Uh, the other guy I mentioned, Gerard Kuiper, yeah. uh, was a Dutch astronomer. Carl Sagan was his student. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who's considered by many to be the father of modern planetary science. Wow. So like he was like leading Godfather science of, physics, of like yeah, plan- yeah. of the planets, like yeah, yeah, the study yeah. of planets. Uh, the Kuiper Belt is named after him, which is nice. a massive asteroid belt belt at the edge of the solar system cool. um there's the inner Kuiper belt and the outer Kuiper oh, belt yeah. named after him <laughs> um he discovered moons around uranus and neptune around around whose anus uh your anus <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> yeah i wrote that i was like he, he won't make the joke he's 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 old enough i thought people called it uranus now yeah no, that should, that sounds stupid I've it? now that i've that. said it out loud <laughs> yeah I, I, saw, I think i was watching a tv program that said uranus and i was like I've only ever heard Uranus. That sounds like, funny, actually. Yeah, okay. I'll let you have that one. That's fine. So, yeah, he discovered moons there. He discovered carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Mars and methane in the atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan. Nice. So he's made, like, a load of significant yeah, discoveries. Yeah, very significant. And he yeah. died in 1973. So, like... Wow. So all of that. <laughs> all, like, four years after we landed on the moon and he's wow. discovered all this kind of stuff was he do you know if he was much older than the rest of them then I um mean, carl sagan would have been the youngest i imagine cause... yeah i think he died fairly young yeah. i think he was in like his 40s or 50s right okay yeah that makes um sense. but obviously for him to have a doctoral student work his yeah, project he was already be, that's yeah he'd be a couple of leagues but i think he's particularly any point. older than leonard Reifer. no okay despite okay. dying like what yeah 40 yeah. years before um and then carl sagan the most famous yes man on the project like <laughs> he's one of those people you always kind of know his name but i yeah can't i can't say i really him. know what he's done beige beige turtleneck yeah 70s black kind of not long but, but like, like wavy kind wavy of hair kind of hair yeah, yeah um his main focus was extraterrestrial life he's kind yes. of uh, he's kind of credited as popularizing science in the u.s yeah i can totally see that like yeah. we kind of get a lot of science programs now like yeah. people like neil degrasse tyson well he's picked up his program he's done a reboot of it yeah as but well yeah sagan kind of that's led the I mean. way for yeah, that. yeah. Right, yeah so he's kind of like the new he, version of him almost. yeah although not quite as popular not as, not <laughs> as, no no and people kind of there's mixed opinions i don't think him, i really but... like neil degrasse tyson no. like, obviously he's smart but like he's one of those like oh look how smart i am i've seen did you see the um there's a there's a tweet exchange with him about leap years. Oh yeah, it's and, so so, and he's like he's he like, says this really smart thing like actually it's it's it's, it's not a leap it's not a like, leap year because we're moving around sharply in this direction and the dates change and someone's like it's almost as if it's almost yeah, as if you're I like, think the the <laughs> word he says uh, like time has like a sudden jerk forward and so <laughs> I was like it's almost as if we've got a word for a sudden jerk forward. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit like. Um, a like, bit pompous almost yeah and like you know, a, i'm sure he yeah he there's just, a subreddit which is i am very smart which oh, is yes, and yes. he's kind of like the poster boy of that yeah, of yeah, like yeah. look how smart i am but uh, was it Cos- cosmos is the yeah show? so yeah yeah um i was gonna ask you if you know is, that is kind of what made him super famous he wrote and narrated it yeah. um it's the most widely watched series in the history of american public tv wow okay uh it's been watched by 500 million people in 60 countries yeah so like as scientists go he's pretty much one of the most famous yeah yeah um he also wrote the eight the 1985 sci-fi novel contact which right. was made into you the 97 what? film i kept when i was thinking of cosmos 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 
I kept thinking of Contact instead, which is the <laughs> Jodie Foster film. Jodie Foster, it? Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, which I haven't seen. But when you were saying about alien life, extraterrestrial yeah. life, I kept thinking of that. So it's funny. So that, yeah, yeah, he, yeah he, he wrote so he wrote the novel. Novel. Then, yeah, and then yeah. made it into a film. The year after he died, I don't know if there's a bit of that of like... Well, we've got the rights to it now he's dead yeah but, maybe um, well it was released a year after yeah yeah maybe it was in the works and he, yeah he just didn't get to see it but yeah i think like his his popular um like saying was billions upon billions in right. cosmos series which became like yeah. its own thing <laughs> um he died in 1996 as we kind of mentioned yeah, yeah. but yeah, it kind of made me laugh when I was researching this nuke in the moon and his name just come up and it's like... Yeah, I feel fuck? like that would be like the moment during the research. You're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> now I, we're on to something. You're like, Carl fucking Sagan's <laughs> on this. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, yeah. I was, the last thing I was going to say, there's, there's a book called Nuke in the Moon. <laughs> Uh, and very straightforward title but... yeah i think it's nuke in the moon and like other ridiculous right. plans yeah, by yeah. a guy called uh vince helton right seems to have good reviews so i was gonna say like if you, if you want to know more yeah, and more yeah, stuff some like further that reading there yeah, uh, yeah. It, i think it's on amazon for like 15 20 quid nice he's not paying me for this but <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening vince <laughs> he's paying me though so. <laughs> damn it <laughs> um but yeah, so that that's Project A119. I was going to say A119. it at the start, but I was like, it's Project A119. You wouldn't know what that is anyway. No, no, no. But now we know that it was one of the most <laughs> insane sounding things, at least, that yeah. we know about in, and in military, you, US you, military history. You can find, um, what was it that I said it was titled? The the one that was declassified, uh, a study into lunar research flights, volume one. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can find that online, easily accessible. Nice. Got a uh, contributors, Cole, a uh, CE Sagan on there. Uh... People are like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, no, it can't be. Yeah, and a lot of it is kind of as you'd expect, like a science paper yeah, on yeah. like what could possibly happen. A bit all like over my head because yeah, understandably, I mean, I'm a, not a physicist. Or, it's a doctorate level. Thing, yeah, isn't it? like yeah. But if you are listening and you are, if you didn't know about this and you do have an interest in physics, yeah, I'd go read it. Even cause... if you know you're not a doctorate level, you might understand more than. More yeah. than Lewis. <laughs> Probably, because believe it or not, my physics isn't at doctorate level. Well, I, I did physics for a while, but I was never particularly good at it. I so. haven't done physics since I think year did, 11. Yeah, yeah. Same. Um, no, I did it for a couple of years after that, somehow, uh, without doing the maths that goes along with it. So I really, no, you can well, tell how well I did that. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> it's, it's very, like, it's the most mathsy science. Yeah, it's pretty it? much paired with maths. And I was the only person in the class who didn't do maths. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, and I kept being told, you should really do maths with it. I, was like, I don't like maths. Like, why are you doing physics? Then? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can imagine I didn't do particularly well in that. One. No, I, that pa- I passed it though. Isn't it? No, nice. well, well, uh, yeah. Any, any no, last I can't questions? Think of anything? That's just in, in completely. Insane it's just a fun die. little story. Yeah, a non-consequential, <laughs> but it's kind of mad to think what would have happened if. They yeah, had. I kept thinking, how far would they get with it? But obviously. Well, not obviously, but you'd imagine that if they'd got any further than they did, that we would know about it in some yeah. way. I think the next um, step was kind of approval and building. Yeah, yeah. At which point, we <laughs> it becomes kind of public. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I suppose they could have hidden it as a as a normal rocket launch up yeah. to a point. Of- I think it's one of those things as well that scientists of the time knew about. It's similar to like. They say about the Manhattan Project that um, it was completely secret and even Truman didn't know until he was president. Right. But a lot of scientists in the leading fields knew because suddenly all the experts yeah, were all working yeah, in one yeah. place. So, so all the experts in the relevant topics. People all... who saw like yeah, people yeah. who look at like the moon and space and nuclear stuff are all suddenly working together. Yeah, yeah. Like, and if it went into oh, an what? active thing, I'm sure the team would have got yeah. bigger than 10. You know, but Yeah, but pe- people who knew... Gerard Kuyper and Leonard Ryfield, they're right. suddenly working together. They're like, hmm, yeah. what could they possibly be working <laughs> on? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take too much. It, it just makes me laugh as well that Gerard Kuyper was like, yeah, I'm going to sp- gonna bring along my doctoral student. <laughs> He's like, very, like, like low, super yeah, secret, yeah, yeah. the best. He's like, I'm going to bring on my doctoral student. <laughs> Which just so happens to be Carl Sagan. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting pieces that have 
that have gone together to become yeah a very interesting story yeah, but, yeah so that's, that's project a119 nice. well thank you very much for sharing that with us lewis <laughs> so on to personal projects yeah um lewis have you got anything or do you want me to start um well, I could quit. I think last time we talked about the fact that I was watching Downton Abbey. I yes, finished, you did. I finished yeah, that last night. I got you finished the whole thing. Well, because I've been away for ten days, and I was with. So you're watching it while Christina's you're family, right? And her mum's a massive Downton Abbey fan, so quite happy to just watch it from my. Yeah, yeah, and she'd yeah. seen it all before. I'd seen yeah. up to like the end of season three, so I was kind of. But they're quite short seasons, aren't they? Like they're... eight episodes. Yeah, yeah, relatively um, short. So yeah, I watched through that and then watched the films on Netflix as well. So right. kind of <laughs> thoroughly enjoy so it. So you've very, very much been binge watching Downton Abbey. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. I mean, we spoke I loads still, about it. I still it. haven't. We spoke yeah. loads about it before, so I'm going to too much detail. <laughs> but that's basically, because I've been away for yeah. it, 10 days yeah, yeah. with the Christina's family. I haven't yeah. really done yeah. a lot of personal project stuff no, I haven't done no, any more of my enough. Godzilla thing haven't really watched too much yeah yeah um, the football season's got going again so yeah, watching I saw football that. I saw I turned on the was it the qualifiers for the World Cup next year yeah England were play, oh, it was a highlights I think oh uh, yeah England, England played to, Hungary Hungary yeah which yeah. Uh, big talking point was the racism from the Hungry fans but right okay. uh, like, I, I tuned in and it was highlights and I watched about five minutes and nothing that yeah, interesting like, happened so I turned it off England on for it was quite straightforward right, so it wasn't yeah, much yeah. to talk about apart from like Hungry fans are banned from UEFA tournaments <laughs> for the next two games because this was a from FIFA the, from this oh right because yeah, this yeah. was FIFA right. they were allowed in so England players took the knee all big boos every time Raheem Sterling touched the ball there was monkey oh, noises from the crowd Jesus. uh Raheem Sterling scored and there's just like the because there's no England fans there it's right. like so it's just overwhelming. plastic cups and everything thrown at oh, him and it's disgusting. like yeah like obviously you don't want to say it's all hungry fans it's just kind of a well the thing is there a was a group of Nazis they, they are yeah, literally yeah. Nazis well, that's true but then on the other side of things um with the Euros when Twitter did did you see they did the investigation? Well, yeah. They didn't really have to do an investigation, but there was there was claims about, you know, where the racist tweets were coming yeah. from. And wasn't it they said they came out and said like eighty percent were from the United Kingdom or No, it? it's I think the BBC's report said it was like seventy two percent came from abroad. Right. And then, and Twitter, then Twitter went into it and said most of it came from England, right. but as in, more came from England than any other country. Right, yeah. Okay, so they yeah. don't kind of contradict. It's just kind of the different way you look at it. So, the, yeah, well, yeah, but so if, if, as in, if yeah. like 28% of the abuse came from England, that's still more oh, than more came from any other country. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I saw a figure somewhere that might have been yeah, punched or, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, it, but also the, the culture is, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to go it's, too it's much quite into it because into it. Yeah. I'm not going to be an expert. It's no, just, it's just it's, a shame to it see. It is just a shame because it, ru- it ends up ruining yeah, things. But, um, but my, yeah, but my football season starts this Sunday. Nice. I uh, had training last night because, uh, as I've mentioned on here, I had surgery a couple months ago. I haven't yeah, really had to do any also. exercise. How was that then? Like, I was knackered off like 20 <laughs> minutes. <Yeah. laughs> I was like, oh, enough. suddenly I'm going to play like two hours and I'm just, it's going to be it's gonna be hard. <laughs> We're playing against a team called Brazil as well. <laughs> well <laughs> so, you know, just are turn... they going to be particularly good, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I just hope we're not be. playing against like Neymar. <laughs> <laughs> it's the actual Brazilian team. <laughs> Could you like, imagine? <laughs> You're like, right, I'm just not going to bother. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so kind of nice, looking forward to nice. get back into that. Yeah, how, how about you? Been um, personal I, project in? Yeah, bits and pieces. Um, watched the season 11 of Archer, which I think you mentioned oh, yeah. last time. Yeah, we talked about it before. I think I watched is, half of it and now yeah, finished it. Yeah, I finished it. it this morning. It was, uh, I was surprised that it was quite a sudden ending. It didn't really... It's quite a short season as it's well. It's quite short because I was looking back because I know you said eight and I didn't know that I'd watched eight because they do fly by. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with, I think, what you said that it's, it's kind of nice to be back to the Despite normal kind stuff. of thing there's not the overarching stories are fine but yeah it's the same with a lot of shows like this you know a lot of them they were they were good they were made popular they were you know became classics as like individual stories it's almost like i don't know i was gonna say if rick and morty started doing a big thing but yeah. also people are kind of clamoring for a big story in that so. yeah but it's nice when the big story is happening in the background 
and it's building up and then there's an episode yeah. or two about it. I always I always thought of Archer, they run out of ideas. So like yeah. now we now we're Coke dealers. Now we work for the CIA. Yeah. Now it's now it's a noir film. Yeah. Which like, I like that stuff. But yeah, yeah. But but it wasn't by as the good. third one. What I do think was interesting in the last episode of this season, he has like the weird flash like he sees them as their space characters yeah i thought that was good because that could go somewhere interesting yeah and obviously um, some of you listeners might be ahead of us because 11 just went on netflix uk but 12 is currently running isn't it yeah is that right yeah i think so um but yeah but, yeah i thought it was good I yeah i was... liked i think i mentioned before about yeah. a character coming back that i quite like yeah, yeah. barry yes yeah yeah i did quite like barry in this they they kind of became almost yeah, frenemies yeah, if you will yeah, yeah there's quite a lot of that kind of stuff because there's the admission almost that cyril and and archer are like kind of best the closest friends. to best friends yeah but then also like because archer's just like ruins everyone and puts them back to the shit place they were yeah, in yeah then he starts hating him again kind of thing there's it's a kind lot of fun funny to like see that. like in the free of his coma um, I was going to say ISIS, but they're not ISIS anymore. Yeah, uh, we don't, have, I don't think they've got a name. No, though. but no. they've become like a super successful, yeah, they've got like a really well trained reputation. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, yeah. One Turns thing out that Archer was, was the problem. <laughs> interesting was, I don't know if they split the season into two, maybe, because they mentioned Juno or something, which is like the alternate, the like rival spy agency. Yeah. But they, other than a couple of guys showing up at one point, you don't really go into that too much. So I don't know if that's something that they, yeah, they're saving for the next season. Maybe. maybe. I mean, um, I think now they've done this season, next season they can just be like, yeah. right, let's go and do it. We've dealt with Archer yeah. coming out of coma and being away for three years. Because I wasn't sure either if they were going to fix, you know, fix his physical you know issues he's because he's got like he's got the stick and they have yeah. like the exosuit thing in that one bit and i thought right they're just gonna wear that but it's almost i, I mean i like the fact that it's something different about the character and it's yeah it's almost like an insecurity for him and it you know people who have you know he's not he's still in very good shape you know yeah it's just a very slight like disability i suppose you could see it as. yeah there's <laughs> also like a universe where ray's had like bionic legs fit in like yeah. two or three times yeah well that's and true barry's a well, it's, yeah it's almost <laughs> silly that they haven't fixed it i suppose but i mean it's almost good that to keep it because it's quite a good message yeah. in a lot you know yeah. without looking looking into it too much like yeah, I don't think it's something they need to change. And having the stick is like a unique thing as well. Isn't yeah. It? Like a gadget thing. But overall, like, yeah. I don't think it's a particularly memorable series, but no. it's just nice for it to be back. And, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think I watched I it over it. like two days, kind of just, yeah, or three, think, you know, this week, just kind of in bits while I was like I eating. Think I, I think I watched it over a few days and we just recorded like in between those three yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be it, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, anything else? Yeah, the only other thing I was going to mention very briefly is I rewatched Aquaman. <laughs> okay. And you might say for some reason, it turned out that um, Amy had never seen it before. Um, she thought we'd seen it because of the scenes in Justice League where he's right. drinking a I'm bottle of whiskey. I'm not convinced Christina's seen it, to be honest. It's, it's actually, if you go into it, with a very open mind it's it's completely bonkers like it's oh yeah it's and i forgot how insane it was like almost straight I've away i've forgotten most of it but i remember thinking yeah it's okay the the and the designs and stuff although they're a bit garish and stuff like there's a lot of crazy world design stuff that's yeah. actually quite well done and like almost in the first scene nicole kidman is the atlantan queen atlanta or alana or something she's got some super yeah name. she like starts falling in love with um Temuera Morrison as he called the yeah. one who's Boba Fett and all that in the yeah <laughs> blah 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 and all the clones but then there's <laughs> suddenly like these fucking like spacesuit guys turn up because the Atlanteans who aren't highborn have to breathe water out of the, uh, so they've got these glowing suits on and they're shooting these like laser water yeah. right and it just goes mad and then it goes like boring for a bit and there's stupid stuff and then it's just madness like Stuff just starts blowing up. I don't remember. I remember it's there's, really insane. It's, there's it's a, a roof long chase, watch. isn't there? Yeah, the, the stuff with Black like Manta is quite cool because Black he's Manta got the it. really. It's a bit like a uh, atomic breath kind of thing. It like fucks you yeah. up. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, there's some. It, it's a long film. It's about two hours twenty. But right. if you kind of watch it, maybe in bits, you know. I think we watched it over 
maybe two <laughs> evenings kind of thing. Oh, I like, could while, never watch a film over two evenings. To be fair, most of the time that we do that, we don't watch the second half of something, which is really yeah, frustrating. Exactly. But, um, maybe, maybe I need to rewatch it. I mean, it's yeah, it's a good, um, it's like a very cinema popcorn movie kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, <laughs> I think it's, uh, it, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I think I probably enjoyed it more the second time. I th- would have loved to see it in the cinema. I don't think I saw that one in the I... cinema. Oh, I don't I think, think it was I when did. I was away. Do you remember when I was traveling? And yeah. I think it came out around then. So you might have seen it, but we definitely, well, I didn't go see it in the cinema. Uh, I can't remember. Um, I might have done, but yeah. I might not have. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I've seen it once. Yeah, no, I'd seen it once. So I think I watched, you know what? I might have even watched it on like a coach. Because they had loads of pirated, like pirated films that you could just watch in like uh, a like a cin- like a airplane thing in the back. God, sounds, I watched sounds the, like the worst watched, way to watch. It. I watched the Meg on a coach in like Bolivia, uh, <laughs> like an overnight coach in <laughs> Nile. <laughs> watched <laughs> together, just like <laughs> with two separate TV screens. <laughs> yeah, very funny. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, I was going to ask if, if, if you'd got around to watching Enola Holmes after you took fucking. No, I haven't time. yet. I mean, those I'm not, three minutes past the two hours. I'm not, yeah. No, well, Aquaman is two hours 20. Yeah. So, um, no, but, it, um, it, it, you know, I wouldn't say it's on my list, but I'm open to the idea. I really Especially state my opinion that it's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to end up watching it and come back and be like, Lewis, what did you make me do? It was we'll, do we'll do a weekly, have you watched Enola Holmes yes, yet? Yes, that's you've the watched new it. segment there at the end. No. <laughs> have you watched Enola Holmes? Um, and there was something else. Oh, I was going to say, um, Marvel-wise, what if we can talk about another time? Because I know that you Yeah, I'm a couple really of episodes up. behind. But uh, Shang-Chi is coming out, or is out now, I think, as we record. Is so it? It's really just like snuck up. The... Um, do you remember the short with the, where the Mandarin comes back in the prison and stuff? Yeah. That's been put up on Disney Plus in preparation. Uh, so I imagine um, Trevor Slattery or whatever he's called, yeah. Ben Kingsley's character, I imagine maybe he'll show up at some point. Or That'd be it's, cool. Or it's just a warm up to like, the real Mandarin. As, as much as people criticise Iron Man 3 and the handling of the Mandarin, I still quite like I think it's good. Ben Kingsley's character. And I think the twist is fun. I think it's good. And I think... Maybe not for the Mandarin. No. It'd I, be fun if yeah. it wouldn't, I didn't have they that were, title. I think there was pressure to put the Mandarin in from one, I think, which is why the organisation... Yeah, because the, the Mandarin has always been a big things. Iron Man villain. Yeah, but, but at that point, it was him fighting other versions of himself yeah even up to three they're like biological versions of him basically they're yeah. like strong and they've got like shooty things. and it's still like a, a scientist yeah scientist yeah so to villain. have it be an action and i really like all the like terrorism stuff and you know all the <laughs> propaganda you really like the terrorism I love, do you? i love terrorism <laughs> you know i'm no, all the that's that's a little <laughs> snippet we can cut out <laughs> no um but yeah like all the propaganda videos you yeah know, i thought that's all really good i mean it can see yeah i can see why people are a bit disappointed but you never know this new mandarin that we see which I think is in the... I haven't watched much of the trailers and stuff, but I'm pretty sure you see a guy who's probably the Mandarin. Um, right. You know, you may... You know, if Robert Downey Jr. comes back at some point, they might get these guys... Yeah, it'd, to, I feel like it'd almost be a shame to uh, do the Mandarin properly and yeah. not have Iron Man there. Yeah, yeah. Because he's a nine-man villain. Yeah, yeah. I, ultimately, I know that... I mean, they're doing it quite differently, I, I imagine, because he's not like a... Fu Manchu with glowing Yeah, and on. it's probably good they do it differently because he's yes. a little bit racist. Yes, and I think that is the other part of why they... Did Ben Kingsley. <laughs> did Ben Kingsley. And yeah. why they didn't do it in Iron Man 1 ben Kingsley, or Iron Man 2. Ben Kingsley, the man who will play any race. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> like, that is... Uh, like, yes. I'm, 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 still, I'm sure he's played literally Well, like he's been Gandhi and... Gandhi. <laughs> he's in The Dictator which is the Sasha Baron Cohen film where they're in, in a North African dictatorship um, and he looks pretty much the same I think he's got slightly more tanned skin as he's, as <laughs> right. he's kind of warranted to do <laughs> I mean I don't know if that's natural tan or not because he, he is is he part he's I'm part just thinking no, because like oh well <laughs> His his birth name was Krishna Pandit Banji. Right. Okay. So I so reckon he's probably a little bit Indian. I take, I take, I take that. I, I I was pretty sure because of the fact he played Gandhi and it hadn't been, you know. Yeah. 
But I just feel like he, he's... But then I mean, also, he's often just played like like white British guys. But also Sasha Baron Cohen in that uh, film plays a North African dictator yeah. despite not being from uh, He's also, he, of course, he plays a German Jew in Schindler's List. Right, okay, yeah. So yeah. it's just kind of any any minority. <laughs> I mean, yeah, whatever. It's He's uh, Ben King. But he's, he's a good actor, isn't he? Like... Did you ben see Kingsley. there's an actor that's called Kingsley Ben something? <laughs> I'm just no, looking him up now. To. Kingsley ben <laughs> It's like, oh yeah. You couldn't have changed your name. <laughs> Kingsley ben I think he might be in... Um, oh, he was in was Malcolm he in, X? He was in something. That oh, no, recently. He starred as Malcolm X in, the, in an Amazon film. Oh, right. Is that that one about them all meeting up in one day or something? One night in Miami, yeah. Yeah, no, that's supposed to be quite good, actually. It's like, um, yeah, it's it's like Malcolm, oh, Malcolm X. X, Muhammad Ali, yeah. Jim Brown, Sam Cooke. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it turned out. To... Oh, he's in Secret Invasion, the new Marvel series. That's oh, okay. That's, I knew he was in something. But yeah, bit of a confusing one. I imagine maybe slightly intentional there. Well, so he, that he can be like people like Ben Kingsley's in no, this. No, but like that's his real name, Kingsley Benadir. Yeah, I mean, it just it you know you'd fit, you'd be aware of it when you were signing up as a yeah. you know Screen Actors Guild or whatever. You'd be aware of it and be like, eh, I'm not going to change. I mean, maybe yeah. you just didn't want to change. It's it's like um, what is it? Uh, Tandy Newton has gone back to her original name now. Yeah, to, 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 um, Tandyway, I think it might be. Yeah, it's not. Spelt how it's pronounced. Oh, is it not? Okay. Yeah, it's it's, it's spelled, spelled tan- Tandaway, but it's like uh, it is pronounced Tandaway. Okay, because <laughs> it turned out that it was shortened. It or was spelled. It was a, it was a typo. Typo in she... one of her first things. Cause it's just dropped the W to make it tan. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and then she's got. Yeah, I think it was when recent. she was in Mission Impossible. I think it might be. I think that was one of her big breaks. Yeah, and she um. Yeah, she just went with it. Now, now she she's kind of reclaiming it. Yeah, of, thanks she? to like yeah. like she was Westworld. She's in Solo. Yeah, yeah. Although she's come out about Solo as well. She's very vocal at the moment. Did you see? No. She's really pissed off that they killed her character off. And it's like you're in a prequel of a Star Wars film, and like you're not... a, like an in between quill. Yeah. It's like everyone in that film died apart from like two uh, like Chewbacca and Han, Han Solo. Solo and the lady Amelia oh, uh, Clark. Amelia Clark. like everyone else in that film who's a character yeah. spoilers <laughs> dies it's like um like and everyone she... dies in Rogue One and yeah exactly kind of... yeah it's like... but then people in that are getting spin well now series, yeah Cassian they? Andor is getting a prequel yeah. series um I'm sure they'll find if they want to some way yeah. where someone can come. I mean, they've got that tree of life thing in Rebels, haven't they? Yeah. You know, there's some yeah. Stupid, is that what it's called? Tree of time or something? Like that. Something like that. Where time <laughs> travels a thing in the Star Wars universe now. Apparently it is, yeah. But um, not, not, it's not easily done. So <laughs> It's only done on animated. But I mean, like, show, no. in Rebels, it's... Yeah, it's a very It's specific. not saying like everyone can just start time traveling. No. Until they make it so. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Cool. Well, um, I think we will wrap things up then. Yeah, sounds good. So um, if you liked what you heard today and you want to leave us a lovely review, uh, you can do so on Apple, iTunes or any other podcasting platforms. Yeah, please do. It really helps with like algorithm stuff. Yeah. And it's kind of just nice to hear what people think. Yeah, yeah. We can read some out at some point. We've got a couple up there. Um, we've got some very nice ones, but we will wait a little bit until yeah. until some new ones start coming. And they all start and, flooding in. Yeah, we might start read open. some Absolutely. on here. Um, and in the same vein, if you want to reach us at all, um, you can reach us via email at theprojectprojectpod at gmail.com. On Facebook and Instagram, we are The Project Project Pod. On Twitter, we're at That Project Pod. And Reddit is R The Project Project. Yeah. So is. if you want to reach us with suggestions for episodes, corrections for our historical yeah. mistakes. Yeah. Um, just general yeah. criticism. Because like we, we do this stuff and kind of go into it blind a lot of time. Yeah. Do yeah. our research, find out about stuff. So if you know more or any corrections, like it'd be be interesting to hear yeah i mean especially with the with stuff like today's episode yeah. reports but similarly with things like 
you know, Project Blue Book, the TV series. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the upcoming TV. If episodes. you're a massive Project MC Squared fan, yeah, yeah, let us absolutely. Know. <laughs> Please correct us, and yeah, we'll be happy to read out anything on the uh, on the podcast that yeah. you send in. Anything else to add, Lewis? Nope. Hope you enjoyed. Yes, I hope you enjoyed, and thank you, Lewis, for reading out that lovely report for us. You're welcome. Um, but until next time, we'll say uh, thank you for listening. Good night. Bye.